if you just joined. Let's see. Ah, there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna wait for everyone. So if you've just joined, hello, hello. I'm just waiting for people to join the live class. <laughs> So if you're watching the recording, I'm just taking a moment, waiting for people to show up before I start the live video. And if you're just, if you're joining, say hello. How are you guys? I feel like I haven't gone live to do an actual class on Facebook in months. Not I feel like I know I haven't. I've just been resting, I've just been enjoying um, being in Mexico. So April and May, I was obviously in class all the time. So work, live classes were just not a thing. Hi, Lila. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so, and then now June mainly has been just really chilled, you know? Um, it's been, <laughs> it's been me sleeping, resting, recalibrating. And then just before like I came to Mexico, I was just in South Africa and with family traveling, wow, like, yeah, I definitely feel like my astrologists are not wrong, hey? My life is always going to be about travel. <laughs> Even when I was in South Africa, I was all over the place. But I'm hoping now that I'm back in Mexico, at least what you go for now, um, I'll be able to do more live videos. Um, but we shall see, because I'm heading to Puerto Escondido. I'm moving to Puerto Escondido in two weeks so that's really cool i'm in matoko to set up the retreat so i've just been like focusing on regulating my nervous system working on my issues around safety and then just setting up the wealthy money retreat in august um have one more thing to try this week like i have to try a uh, chef's food because I found a vegan chef and he doesn't speak English either, but it's all good. My Spanish is coming along, so that no longer bothers me. I'm like, oh. guys, like honestly, one thing that I keep learning in travels is that English is really not the asset that we've been taught it is. Hey, like most of the world does not speak English and that is OK. <laughs> so Murandeni, you say thank you so much. Hello oh, for accepting me. Hey, I guess you're new to the group. So, okay, guys, I wanted to, I am feeling very rested. So that's why I also want to do live videos. I want to do things. I've been sleeping, getting massages, eating good food while well, mainly smoothies this time around. Just really, really doing self-care, you know, and focusing on pleasure and self-care. So... Guys, I feel amazing. I'm not even going to try to hide that. I'm just like, I feel rested. I feel amazing. You know, I definitely feel, whew, yeah, no, the work works. Like, I've been doing some deep, deep healing work. Um, also been doing a lot of wound work. So even though I haven't been going live on here, I've been doing a lot of my own inner work and holding myself and holding my nervous system and regulating my nervous system. And it's been good. And just giving myself permission to rest. And I just want to say, just like having built a business that allows me to do that and can continue to generate an income so that I can focus on self-care because I was tired. When March came around, I was just tired. You know, I'd been doing a lot and I just keep realizing the importance of building a business that is in alignment with the vision that you have for your life and for yourself with your values. 
And also just how important it is that the business has systems operations in place and it's all in tandem. It's not that these are different and separate to the work that you're doing on yourself and who you are and who you're evolving to become is that the business gets to support that, that you get to have the life and you get to have these things because you've built a business that allows that. And so today I actually wanted to talk about something that I keep seeing on social media, which is around procrastination. So Nimal, you say I'm writing next August retreat for Sri Lanka with South African people. Nimal, I'm going to contact you. This is happening in May in 2023. So guys, where you see MK Lanka, if you guys want to go to Sri Lanka, please contact Nimal. He is the guy NK Lanka. He's going to be helping me with my retreats. So actually the Sri Lankan and it's going to be a joint retreat, Sri Lanka and Maldives. But that's a whole other story for May. And I'm going to be working with Nimal to make that happen. He is one of the people that has been helping me a lot and has helped me with my retreats in Sri Lanka as well. So thank you, Nimal. It's not going to be as long as August. And guys, I am looking forward to moving back to Sri Lanka. I love Mexico. But I just realized like, you know, in a place is like your heart is there. I realized that Sri Lanka and me, it's like my heart is there. I still, even though I'm in Mexico, I'm like, oh, I miss the sunsets in Sri Lanka. I miss the ocean. I miss Mangala. I miss <laughs> talking to people. So it's been interesting. But back to the topic at hand. If you guys have joined and you don't know who I am, my name is Vangile Makwakwa. I am the founder of Wealthy Money and I help women of color heal ancestral money trauma so they can fall in love with their bank accounts, increase income and live their best lives. The reason why you hear me talk about so many different countries is that I actually am a nomad and I've been building my company for the last six to eight years even though i've been traveling for 15 years longer <laughs> wow but i keep forgetting it's now like almost started traveling so this is my 17th year as a nomad right so i've been traveling and living in different countries for 17 years i've i've lived in different in more than 10 12 countries at this point and I visited way more. So how I love to travel is that I go, I actually immerse myself in the culture. I move to a country for like four, six months or even a year, two years. And I live in the country. I experience the country. I experience the culture and the people. I want to live in countries. I That's how I travel. It's not for me. It's never been about the passport stamp. It's about experiencing the actual country and living in it and getting to know the people in the country, right? So I work, as I said, with ancestral money trauma. So one of the things that I also help people do is build their businesses <laughs> and set up their businesses. Nimal, you say Pasakuda, definitely. That's where the retreat will be <laughs> in Sri Lanka. So, um, one of the things that keeps coming up, especially right now, is this notion of people feeling like they lack discipline. Oh, actually, it's not even right now. It's just that I'm seeing it more. But it's a big thing that we've been taught around the fact that you lack discipline if you want to be able to increase your income, increase your savings, pay off debt, it's because you are not disciplined, right? So a lot of people feel like they are procrastinating and that's why they can't go after the goals that they've set themselves. And here's the thing, so we go into, and I did this for years, right? We go into motivational talks, we try to be motivated, we try to be inspired, I would listen to like, all these inspirational speeches first thing in the morning and be like yes i'm gonna make this day a success and have a long to-do list and be like this is how i'm gonna achieve my goals and how i'm gonna build my business and increase my income and pay off my debt and at the time i was sixty thousand dollars in debt right so just debt 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 and i thought it was all about discipline and at the end of every day, without fail, I will feel, I would feel like a failure. I would feel like I'm doing something wrong, like something wasn't working out for me, like something was wrong with me. 
what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? Why can't I get this done? You know, and I would beat myself up, right? And I would wake up and try again and I would do it over and over. And I did this for years. And as all this was happening, I would feel even worse because it would feel like, why is it that I know in my head what I want to do and I even have the strategy, but I just don't feel motivated. I just can't seem to take the action. I just can't seem to make this happen, right? And everywhere I would go, people would tell me about, you need discipline, you need self-discipline. But what I was unable to articulate was that I wanted the self-discipline because who the heck doesn't want to wake up and be motivated and do the things that they want to do, right? I mean, honestly, who doesn't want that? We all want that. We all have this deep desire. But somewhere between the desire and the wanting and the actual doing, something happens, right? And I remember even when I wanted to write uh, books, I, there was a time when I also got in the midst of all this because I was pushing myself, right? So first it started with, I want to build my business, show up and do cold calls to sell. That's what I was taught, right? Because I went and I did an MBA, graduated with really top marks from, uh, from business school in Boston, Massachusetts. And I just thought, this is how I've been taught. If you want something, you need to go out and get it. And I would do that, do that. And it, with every rejection, things would feel worse and worse and worse. Until even doing the small things like just getting out of bed and sending out an email would take me a week. Like literally sending emails, um, checking emails would take me weeks and I would keep trying to push through it, push through it. And the more I try to push through it, even the one thing that I really loved and was always good at, which is writing and explaining myself and sharing my thoughts on paper, Eventually what happened was I got writer's block and I could not write, right? Because on top of that, I was like, you need to write a book. People are talking about writing books. You need to do this, you need to do that. And so I was in the push through modality, right? And I was in push through mode because I didn't want to be procrastinating and I was thinking I was lazy, I was demotivated. And the more I pushed through, the more things fell apart, the more I felt just I couldn't do enough, right? And just let me know if this is resonating with you. And what I've learned on my journey, having worked with hundreds of clients, and I mean hundreds, right? Like I've had the pleasure of working with many, many different clients who do different things from many different backgrounds, is that what I've seen is that most of us are in this and most of, uh, most of my clients will come to me with this belief that they are lazy, that they somehow need to be motivated. I've even had clients say, I want to hire you as my coach because I feel like at least then you wake me up and motivate me and tell me to get things done. And I'm like, mm -mm, I won't do that. In fact, I'm going to be the coach that probably tells you take a rest. And this is not about self-discipline and this is not about motivation because as long as the conversation stays in self-discipline, then it's all about the fact that other people have more discipline than us. Then it's something that's wrong with us and something that needs to be fixed with us, right? It's never about something deeper like healing. And it almost feels like it's so easy. You just need more motivation, right? And this is such a thing. And what it does is it just leaves us feeling like crap, right? And here's what I would do as well. So when I was in the midst of that, <laughs> let me know if this also resonates, right? I used to keep these long to-do lists, right? Where I'd write every single thing that needs to be done. So it would be like maybe 20 to 30 items in a month. And I was already exhausted just looking at that. But I didn't realize that. I was just like, yes, if I just set aside enough time in a day and I eat this much and I sleep and I wake up at exactly this time and I exercise for X amount, and I, you know, just talk to people for this amount of time, then I'll have enough time to get all this done. I never ever saw that my to-do list was the crazy thing, 
right for one and like i never ever saw how that was also causing uh strain and stress and overwhelm for me right and so what i've realized is most of us and i'll tell you what helped me how i ended up writing the book right how i ended up actually becoming a writer and writing heart mind and money when i was so when i had writer's blog couldn't do anything couldn't start a business anything so my first business had failed i was sixty thousand dollars in debt things were falling apart best thing to ever happen to me right because in that moment the one and then i couldn't get out of bed because i was having panic attacks around money and i was also very very depressed and I couldn't answer emails because I was so depressed and every time people sent me a message or an email, etc., it just took me weeks to get through. Again, I say that for me anyway, looking back was a blessing because the only thing that I could do at that point was go inward and start working on me, right? So one of the first things that I started to realize, I didn't know it then, it would take me years and years to understand what the heck I was doing when I was doing the work, because so much of my work was so physical. And now I understand that I was actually doing a lot of work around the nervous system and trauma, was that I didn't understand that I was in freeze mode, that most times, because the goals were so big, one thing was happening whenever I would set the incredibly impossible income goal, because what happens when we're in panic mode, right? And I see this all the time and in urgency, especially when money and income goals are concerned and where most people start businesses, when most people sometimes start businesses out of a space of this business has to solve all my monetary things. And then we put impossible goals onto the business itself, right? So I would set insanely massive goals for my business. And what would happen is I would try to work towards those goals, but the goals were so big that they would actually feel overwhelming to my nervous system. And when the nervous system feels overwhelmed, like emotionally I would feel overwhelmed, but what I didn't realize is that my nervous system would feel overwhelmed. And I want you to think of your nervous system as almost like a machine or a factory in a factory, right? Imagine that you're going through life and Let's say that you're grinding things because like I love to think because for me, my digestion was what was most affected, right? My digestive system. So I always think of it in this regard. So let's say that maybe you're grinding corn using the example of corn because I live in Mexico and corn is everywhere. It's in everything, right? Corn is now my life. <laughs> you know. So like corn. So like imagine the machine grinds corn. And then you just keep putting in corn into this machine. At some point, if you put in too much and too, um, too fast, we know that the machine is going to get stuck, right? It's just going to go bigger. And then you'll need to probably clean it, empty it, rewire it, something, right? Same with the car. If you drive a car for too long, too fast, nonstop, things start to happen. So... This machine just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going nonstop, right? But we know that if the machine is being used nicely, you stop it, you take time out, you clean it up, all that, the machine is going to probably work for longer periods and be in good condition. Yet, we don't do that with our own bodies, with the nervous system, right? We just set these incredibly insane goals and we just keep going, keep going, keep going. And everyone tells you to just keep pushing through, keep pushing through, keep pushing through. And of course, we get overwhelmed, you know? And so we just get stuck and we get into freeze mode. So that is the example of overwhelm. And then the second, uh, the second reason when we start digging into trauma is that as we're doing all this, there are certain things, there are certain goals that then trigger our nervous system, right? That like, I've decided I'm going to do this and then we just get fully, fully triggered because even though I want to achieve these things, there's certain reasons why parts of me, parts of my psyche may not want to achieve these goals because they do not feel safe, right? And in an effort to protect us, then uh, we actually get into a situation where we are 
split as humans, right? Where part of us is like, I want to move forward and the other part is like, break, 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 break. This is not safe. I want to keep you protected, right? And usually that will be maybe a past life version, an inner teen version, an inner child version. So what you end up doing is literally being like a person who is driving, you're driving this machine, this body, right? And you have the accelerator on and at the same time, the brake on. Now, if this was the car, you would, you know that at some point there'll be flames going. This car is not going to keep moving because moving with the accelerator and the brake on at the same time is basically creating a stationary situation. So that's what's happening with some of us, right? So these are some of the two um, examples that I actually wanted to talk about today when it comes to procrastination and we know that if with the car or with the machine that I talked about at the beginning with the maze machine, if you force it, the car is going to break down, right? If you keep forcing the car, like accelerator, brake, accelerator, brake, at some point, this car is going to break down and be really messed up, right? And then we do, if you keep forcing the maze machine to keep going and you're like beating it up, we know that that machine is going to break down. We understand this of machines. But somehow we don't understand this of ourselves and we are not even machines. We are flesh and blood. We bleed, you know, but we don't treat ourselves with that same kind of kindness and compassion. And instead, what we do is we keep pushing through. Eventually, you push through to the point where I hope many people never get to where I got to, where my digestive system started to fall apart. Like there was a time when I stopped digesting food totally you know like my body just didn't know how to do it because things were just falling apart because i pushed through to the point of my health right some people push through to the point of other health concerns right and some people have experienced that we push through and our adrenal glands just go like poof you know then we have adrenal gland fatigue we have burnout, we have all sorts of mental health issues, we have all sorts of physical ailments, right? This is why I am not in favor of self-discipline, especially where money is concerned, because some we don't know when it's just quote-unquote laziness or when it's really someone having a trauma response and actually the nervous system is saying, I am in freeze mode right now. I can't do this. So what we try to do instead, why the self-discipline, the motivation, the inspiration, the, the motivational speakers don't work long term, right? We go to a motivational talk. This used to happen to me all the time and I know it happens to a lot of people. You go to a motivational talk, you're like, yes, you write down all the points and you're like, I'm going to do this, right? And some people are probably listening to this and they're like, this makes sense. I'm going to do this. Van is talking a lot of sense, right? But it's not about the talking that heals us, right? It's that you're here in the motivational speech and I would go home and be motivated for three days max and just not be able to continue with the motivation after those three days. And I used to think something is so wrong with me and I'm so lazy when really what was happening was I was in the midst of some intense trauma responses, right? And what I needed to be doing wasn't to be pushing through and trying to force myself to do something because that was actually causing a lot of damage and led eventually led to me not being able to get out of bed and a lot of physical ailments. What I needed was to focus on healing my nervous system so that my nervous system could feel safe, so that I could feel safe enough to take action and I wasn't having to push through to take action, right? So I'll just see what people are saying and then I'll just continue. So Miso, you're saying, I'm the procrastinator right now. I thought it was because my job is so busy. Mm, interesting, Miso. I didn't even know that. So guys, Miso is my um, co-host and uh, on the Property Magicians podcast and my co-founder with the Property Magician Stockdow. Murandeni, you say, this is so me. I know what I want, but I can't right <laughs> and miranda you say um these are you say who does this procrastination belong to 
and that's what Zana you say chief procrastinator here and I lose so much because of that and Tembela you say perfect example around the maze machine right so here's why the motivation most of us are not able to get through things is because we're trying to solve a nervous system issue something in the body with mindset stuff with affirmations, with motivations, with inspiration, and then we're trying to push through something where the sub personality, where our sub personalities have more invested than us, uh, more invested by having us protected than in us succeeding. And if you take anything from this talk, I want you to remember one thing: when it comes to trauma and our sub personalities, it's that our sub personalities, it is a very physical thing for that for them right the psyche it's a very physical thing and our subconscious interacts with our nervous system right so the two work together right so what i learned in um what i learned in the pasna meditation was that if you want to still your mind still your body right so still body equals still mind right so um and it's the same thing like still mind can lead to still body but more i i reckon there's a reason why the pashna focuses more on meditation through the body than through the mind itself right i found that to be way more powerful right but what and this is what led to me having a deeper understanding of the nervous system was this my own experience right was that it's not I was never going to think myself out of my writer's block. I was never going to motivate myself out of procrastination and writer's block. I needed to work with my nervous system and I needed to start working with the parts of my psyche that were invested in keeping me protected. Because for whatever reason, they were keeping me in freeze mode because they believed that moving forward was more dangerous than staying stuck. So you, adult you, knows that moving forward is not a problem. But maybe your inner child or your inner teen self doesn't know that, right? And so that's when you need to start working with those parts of you. And then not only that, you need to involve the body. The body needs to be involved in the healing process and not, I mean, Yoga separate, I'm a yoga teacher, love it, right? But all these modalities are all part of healing trauma, but yoga is not something that I'm talking about in this particular regard, right? It's about working with both the inner child and the nervous system so that you can go into the body and start feeling safe in your body. And then only when it feels safe enough for you and for your various, and I'm saying inner child, it could be your inner child, inner teen, an ancestor, an ancestral memory that's keeping you stuck. It could be your past life. Guys, it could be so many different things, right? So many different versions of you. I don't know which versions. I'm just using the ones that we all use most of the time, right? So those parts of our sub personalities need to feel safe because they are invested in keeping us protected. So always remember that the mind only has one true job. Whatever anyone else tells you, just remember this when it comes to the mind, ask all the specialists. The mind has the job of keeping you alive. So if at any point your psyche believes that the thing that you want to achieve is gonna put you in danger and be the opposite of keeping you alive and lead to some kind of pain or trauma or death to you, it will not allow that to happen. It will fight you to the very death. So case in point with me, right? I had gone and done an entire MBA so that I could have financial freedom and get out of debt. I started, when I started working towards my strategy and my action plan, I started having panic attacks because the parts of me, especially my inner team, really, really had seen how having more money within my family led to more fights, led to the people that had more money 
being violated in some way, physically, emotionally, verbally. So obviously that part of me had started to associate having more money and financial freedom with actual safety issues, with survival, with not feeling safe, right? So why would that part of me and why would my psyche be like, ooh, we want to achieve more money if there's like entire parts of my sub-personality that are like more money equals violence, equals people beating you up, equals people shouting at you, equals families falling apart, equals friends not liking you. Why? Do you understand that all that represents actual physical safety? This is a matter of like safety and can be a matter of life and death. So those parts of me were very much invested in protecting me. To us, it doesn't seem like protection. It's like, oh my gosh. But to the adult you, it may not seem like protection. But to a teen or to a child, that is protection, right? And even to us as adults, if we're deeply honest, how many of us have dated men that may be financially stable, but you realize that, heck, if I stay here, I will die. So you're like, I'd rather live with nothing and have my life. It is the same kind of concept, right? So why, if you as an adult can comprehend that you couldn't leave any kind of financial security for your own health and well-being, mental, physical, etc., then that's what your inner child is trying to protect you from, from repeating that cycle. Because remember, for children, they've only ever experienced whatever they've been exposed to. But so out of they don't have a lot of resources as to how to navigate the world. So for them to navigate the world, they develop protective measures. So if you have children, you can start to even observe how your children are starting to navigate the world and some of the patterns that they have. And start to actually, and those patterns are not gonna suddenly disappear unless you start making space for your child to start feeling safe enough so that they can start re start rewiring their nervous system. So how I have learned to stay safe was just I made a decision from a very young age that because I don't want this kind of drama and I don't want to be involved in violent altercations of any kind, the best thing I can do is to just stay safe. And the way that I can stay safe is to just never have anything to do, to do with money. So when adult me makes this decision on a conscious level that I need to go make more money and I need to, uh, to start writing books. Oh, and by the way, I also made the decision not to be seen and not to be visible because if I'm visible, then I'm a target, right? So one of the first, what do we do as humans to stay, uh, to stay safe? Let's say someone is attacking us we instantly curl up into a ball, right? That's an instinct. So we make ourselves smaller. So we're not like, oh, someone is coming to attack us. I'm going to be big, become a target. No. So, so I decided I was also going to be visible. So if writing books meant that there was a possibility of becoming bigger and being seen, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to show up on Facebook live, uh, lives. I didn't want to speak out. I just wanted to just be like, toe the line. Hopefully people will not see me, but somehow I'm going to make money. <laughs> right. And, um, that just didn't happen for me. Right. Because there was so much, it was scarier for me to make the money and to be visible than it was to actually just be making, uh, then to just allow myself to be financially free. Right. So for most of us, this is what's happening. And then it shows up as procrastination. So for me, how it showed up was an inability to even respond to things in my business. Like small things would take me hours to do. Like my greatest example is the email because literally people would send me an email. I'd respond to two weeks later. Not 
Actually, I'd go a step further. I wouldn't read the emails because I was so scared of what would be in the email, especially if it was related to my business or invoicing. Oh, and I never invoice people. Like, I just would never send out an invoice. I would rather die. Like, I would do the work and I wouldn't know how to send out an invoice. And if I did send out an invoice, I'd spend like days and weeks freaking out about it. Um, so that was also another thing I couldn't write. So when I started doing the work around trauma and my nervous system, it was interesting because like I said, I was already at my lowest point. <laughs> I actually didn't have a goal at this point. This is what was so awesome, right? Like I had already decided nothing is working out, whatever. So I just decided to do the work itself. And guys, would you believe it? Like I woke up and all the research that I've been compiling over the years for Heart, Mind and Money, I wrote that book in six months, wrote it, edited it, etc. got it into a publisher's hands in six months. Everything, right? I mean, like most of you guys saw me do the journal last year and I it went from idea it literally was an idea to physical copy in three months in people's hands. And that's not due to discipline, right? Like, yes, because I didn't work from, I need the discipline to do this. What I worked from was, how, does it, how do I make myself feel safe and work with my nervous system so that these goals feel safe enough to achieve? And then taking action towards that goal wasn't I wasn't putting blocks in place. The parts of me that were scared of achieving the goal were no longer stepping in to keep me safe and being my red light and my traffic light and my brake, right? They were just stepping in to keep me safe. They, I'm sorry, they weren't stepping in to keep me safe. They were integrated and I didn't have to worry about them stepping in to keep me safe. That's what I wanted to say, right? So adult me was no longer being hijacked. Adult me was the one running the show. But for most of us, what's happening is when we're in the accelerator and brake mode, what is happening is that it's the inner child, it's the inner teen, it's all the traumatized versions of us that are running the show. And then it shows up as procrastination. And instead of working on the procrastination, what we do is we actually end up at war with ourselves because we make it a disciplinary issue. And if our inner child has experienced disciplinarian stuff and has been uh, brought up by a parent that has forced them to do things and they were never heard, we actually end up re-traumatizing ourselves without even understanding it because we're working from the space. So when I started just working opposite, that's when the procrastination stopped being an issue. That's how I've been able to show up in my business, even when I've been traveling, how I've been able to set up systems, anticipate that, oh, I'm gonna need rest now, I'm gonna take a break, or I know my personality works like this. So what if I build a business that is foolproof against my personality, right? Like literally, that's what I've had to do in my business. So I'm just like, oh, there's certain things where I'm honest about myself, I'm never gonna do this. Uh, or I'll do this for a few weeks, but I'll never be consistent, but this is important for business. So how can I make sure that the business keeps growing even when my personality is coming into play, even when my curiosity is coming into play. So how do I do that, right? But for me to get to this point and be able to even talk about this and even have the business and build it in this manner, I needed to do the work on trauma. And the work on trauma is a physical work because trauma lives in the body. So most people are trying to heal trauma by being by doing the behavioral stuff. Most, and as I said, running the risk of re-traumatizing ourselves or pushing through to the point of physical ailments. And we're trying to heal something that is physical using the mind, right? And doing affirmations, mindset stuff, etc. And this is why it doesn't last long. So ultimately, when I talk about ease, it's not that I'm talking about easy. So when I talk about ease, this is what I'm talking about, that like, oh, I could sit down and write a book 
It's not that I didn't get to write the book. I hired someone else to write the book or something. I didn't put in the hours, etc. I put in the hours, you know. I sat and wrote the book and did nothing for like six months. I did this with the journal. You guys saw me doing things with the journal. It doesn't mean that you don't do the work. But when I talk about ease and working from ease, I'm talking about the fact that you are not your own red light. You are not your own break. You're not having to fight through. You're not having to push through. You're not having to fight yourself because every part of you is in alignment with the goal. And that's also what alignment means. It's that every part of you is in alignment because the out of alignment is that Hey, my inner child is feeling some type of way. The ancestral memories that I carry, my ancestors are feeling some type of way about this goal. Like my inner team is feeling some type of way about this goal. So actually what's happening is a whole lot of fighting and it's showing up as freeze in the body and in the nervous system. And trust me when I say this, it's gonna take a lot and it may have physical ailments if you keep pushing through. You know, there's a lot to that. And I know a lot of people are listening to this and are already feeling like I'm pushing through and I'm already feeling exhausted. This is why you're feeling exhausted, right? This is exactly why you're feeling exhausted. This is because you're fighting yourself. And I can tell you for free that in this battle, because adult you is thinking of the goal and the other sub personalities are thinking of survival and protection those sub-personalities are most likely to eventually win. Ha, huh. okay. So, um, <laughs> Misa, you say the motivation affirmations and you're laughing, that stopped working a long time, hey? But people are still like in it, hey? Like people are in it. I see people like really trying this. And, um, and I think, I don't blame people because I feel like we live in a world that shames us for a procrastinating instead of seeing procrastinating as a feedback mechanism from our own nervous system from our subconscious what we do is we make it a shameful thing and then we want to push through it right but it's not like I don't in fact, like, I love it when I'm procrastinating because it means like, oh, something in me says that I should stop. And this is when I go into the money magic work. I mean, the money magic students have seen me, especially the last few weeks. I've been doing deep, deep work around my nervous system and centering my nervous system and regulating my nervous system. This is what it feels like, right? Like I felt like nothing was moving forward in terms of the retreat and the venues that I wanted. So instead of pushing through, I was like, and I was just feeling so tired and procrastinating around it. So instead, what I did was I went within and I started off this video saying, I feel so rested. I feel so happy. I feel like I can do stuff. I can work again. Why? Because those parts of me, I've, I've been doing work to integrate them right and to hear them out and creating a safe space for themselves uh, for them and working on regulating my nervous system so that i can feel safe and trust me when you start to feel safe then there is no need to push through right so um okay <laughs> uh okay let's see just reading comments guys so <laughs> um and then uh, Misa, you're saying, does the work continue if my procrastinator self wants to go and play? I love this. Yes, right? So like for me, it's this is what I love. So this is why I love doing the work that I do, because I think that we've been taught also even in the way that we do work, that even as entrepreneurs, we've kind of um, been taught to value this all work, no sleep, 5 a.m. club. Guys, you are a body, flesh, and blood. If a machine worked nonstop, only took time off. Like, we know if you switch off a machine just for a few hours a day and it doesn't really get to rest and doesn't get serviced, that machine would fall apart. But we don't think that of our own bodies, right? 
So maybe it's also in how we build our businesses and how we approach work. And then Morandini, you say, how long does it take to heal the nervous system? So, okay, this is another question that I'll address at another time because people assume that there's a timeline to healing. So what we do is we're not even healing, right? It's about regulating the nervous system. It's quite common that your nervous system will get dysregulated and then come back to regulation. After all, like, this is what it means to be alive. If you are never at any point shaken by anything, are you truly alive? So what we talk, a healthy nervous system is a nervous system that goes like haywire, but can quickly bring itself back to regulation or haywire and can get to regulation. So a dysregulated nervous system, especially for most of us where money is concerned, where entrepreneurship is concerned, is that the nervous system never has a baseline, never has a center. It's always on. It's always on. It's hard for us to take a break. It's hard to rest. It's hard to fully sleep. We never even get, to, we never feel rested we never feel just okay with chilling you know just chilling just sleeping right and there's so it's about how do you um start to regulate the nervous system and that again takes as long as it takes um uh, okay sorry guys i'm looking at comments so i'm just <laughs> Uh, okay, and then Misa, you're saying, um, oh, Tem uh, Tembella, you say, I'm super, super exhausted, Lord. Yeah, like that's often, a, that's often one of the first signs, right? And I find this to be very true for most of us as black women in particular, right? But that's also because we live in a culture where like our mothers would be like, why are you sleeping till like 10 a.m.? So there's a lot of like beliefs that also keep us in hypervigilance, right? That we then need to look at and explore. And Nisa, you say the culture of hustle is also contributing to this push through. Yes, totally. And the crazy thing that I find very interesting about hustle culture and even corporate culture, right, which is hustle culture too, is that so many people are getting out of there physically burnt out, exhausted with all sorts of illnesses. And none of us are going, maybe this culture is toxic to the body. It's something that we've almost kind of normalized. And what we've done is we just keep developing pills to counter that. We're like, oh, you feel exhausted. Just have an energy drink. It's like you're healing the symptom, not the cause, because tomorrow I need another energy drink. And that also has its own implications later on. So this is huge, right? This culture is, guys, it's not, it's toxic. It is destroying us. And we, the crazy thing is that we all know it's destroying us, but we feel like we can work through this, right? So yeah. Mm. So Temela, you say, let's listen to our bodies. Yep. And Misa is responding to Umurendeni. She's saying, my experience has been, it heals one part, then gets triggered another time by something else. It almost feels like it happens for the rest of our lives. Hence, we learn the tools to self-heal. Couldn't have said it better. Thanks, Mizos. So, <laughs> Mizos is, is also one of the Money Magic students. Um, so Zaza, you're saying uh, corporate culture is totally hustle culture and both are toxic. I, I was born too tired to subscribe to it. <laughs> Zaza, I feel you. Like, I feel like I was already too tired, right? <laughs> um, so, um, Temela, you say, I'm not okay by just chilling and sleeping. Yep. And Temela, you say, feeling, uh, sleeping feels so wrong. I sometimes jump up and work. Like last night, I slept 4 a.m., woke up 7 a.m. Temela, that's, that's deep. That's deep, sis. Like, I mean, I will, I'll probably do another live video tomorrow where I unpack why rest feels what is happening in the nervous system and why it's hard for us to rest, right? When the nervous system is in hypervigilance mode, it is, it's so important to understand this because then rest can also feel unsafe, 
right? So this is again why the work has to happen at a nervous system level because if we push ourselves and rest feels unsafe, do you understand that that's also just introducing unsafety into an already heightened um, or hypervigilant nervous system, right? So guys, thank you so much for joining me. Like I said, I, I have energy now. I have time, so I'll be doing my live videos. <laughs> I'm really, really excited. Like, <laughs> I've been resting, I've been chilling, so I'm just like out here. I'm like, I want to talk to people again. So, no, longer you say, I think I'm ready to start yoga. It's high time I listen and practice what you preach. I really don't sleep. Mm, yeah. So, guys, if this is resonating with you and you're like, I really, really want to do this, right? And, um, and I'm feeling like I want to merge safety and learning more about safety in the nervous system and doing work around safety and regulating the nervous system and resting and pleasure and working on my money set points and increase and um, increasing my income and figuring out what is holding me back then I want to invite you to the Mexico retreat I have two spots for this retreat so the retreat is from Friday August 19th to Sunday August 28th 2022 so this year we're going to have two hour massages every day. We're going to be doing trips around various parts of Oaxaca. We're going to be watching sunsets. We're going to be living in a villa right on the ocean. So we're going to experience beautiful views because a huge part of working with the nervous system is yes, we're going to be going into some deep, deep parts of the nervous system because anyone that has worked with me knows that my work goes into deep parts of trauma right and really working on a nervous system level so what we do is we trigger the nervous system we work with it so that we can get to the point where it starts to release where we can start to release some of the memories and stories stored in the body and we can start to regulate but at the same time we also use pleasure as a tool to regulate the nervous system so good food, massages, um, trips, going to waterfalls, just the beach. We're using all the various senses. I'm a big believer in pleasure through the senses, through the body, not through the mind. I'm not talking Netflix. I'm not talking just like all that, but like really integrating it into the body and healing the nervous system on a very physical level, right? If this feels like something that you want, then I want to invite you to come to the retreat. Hit me up by inbox. Let me know if this is resonating with you. The retreat is 80,000 Rand or 5,500 US dollars. So if this is resonating with you, hit me up. There are payment plans, four month payment plans. It's going to be epic, right? So let me see what people are saying in the comments before I head off. Um, no, Glung, are you say, oh, okay, I've already read that. Knox, actually. And Vasitana, you say, I sleep. I sleep, Shem. Like, I had an event on Saturday. I slept until 2 p.m. on Sunday. But there's always that guilt that you should be doing something. Hmm. Um, I always, I like guilt. Guilt is an interesting emotion. I've written lots and lots about guilt, right? Because I always say that guilt is often a message from our subconscious. So if you go on the Wealthy Money blog, I've talked a lot about this, about how guilt is often a message that we're doing something wrong and some part of our subconscious is working, um, is letting us know this. So it's really, it's, I love the emotion of guilt. It's one, it's been one of my most interesting explorations. Murandeni, you say, thank you so much. And Nazi say, thanks, Van. I really need to heal this machine for it to work. Yeah. And Misa, you say, I get two massages per month. It's in my month budget. That's serious. Yes. So guys, let me know if the Mexican retreat is calling out to you. I do have two spots left. I'm super excited. I'm, I'm actually, now I'm getting more excited about the retreat. Now that I've done all my work on it, I'm so excited about that, what's going to come through and what's going to happen. 
Until next time, so I may do like a series of classes because I've been doing a lot of work on the nervous system and safety and we do a lot of work on safety and the nervous system in the Money Magic course because like I said, it's body work and it's not like something that I, and again, why I just, I'm not just going to be like, oh, this is what you do is because everyone, I don't know what your source of unsafety is, right? And like I said, it takes as long as it takes with this healing journey, but they are definitely tools for that. And we discuss all of that in the Money Magic course. You get all those tools and they involve the body and it is absolutely awesome. Have a fantastic day. Cheers.